Hi, it's me Jacqueline. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe my channel and visit my Patreon page. Link in the description. I had trouble falling asleep, but still awoke early in the morning. I had made my decision about what I would wear to school, and I hurried to get ready. The other kids wouldn't be able to call me chicken, but I began stealing myself for other names that would be directed my way. Since I hadn't removed the breast forms or nail polish, it didn't take me nearly as long to get ready as it had for the dance, but my hair still took as long as ever because I wanted it to be perfect. As I wiggled my way into the suede skirt, it seemed tighter than I remembered. The waist was fine because the corset managed that, but my tush seemed to be expanding. I couldn't help but wonder if the hormones were responsible. I wore the same dark blue blouse that I had worn on the trip home from Illinois and added several bracelets and a gold necklace after putting on my earrings. After slipping into the matching suede jacket, I looked at myself in the mirror. On other days, I would have been delighted to see Michelle staring back at me, but today I felt a sense of persistent anxiety, despite the fact that my appearance was impeccable. While I waited for Jennifer and her mother, I made a piece of toast. My vitamins were on the counter in the kitchen, and I stared at the bottles while the bread toasted. As I prepared to butter the toast, I finally gave in and took one each of the tablets, as I had been doing since June. I figured that I had come down the path so far now that one more day wouldn't make a difference, and if I decided to become Michelle permanently, I didn't want to have skipped a day. When Jennifer and her mom pulled into the driveway, I grabbed my backpack and hurried out. Fortunately, my teachers hadn't given any homework assignments yesterday. I guess they knew from prior years that it wouldn't be done by anyone going to the dance. Jennifer was dressed in the tux again, and as I climbed in, Mrs. Crowley said, Michelle, you look absolutely beautiful, but isn't that skirt a little tight? My cousin altered it this past summer, but it seems my tush has grown a little. It looks fine around your hips, dear. I meant around your thighs. Perhaps I can alter it a little to give you a little more room to walk. I think that Lisbeth cut off all the excess, so it can't be altered. That's too bad. It really is a beautiful skirt. I'm sorry that I didn't see you in the wedding dress last night. My mom took a lot of pictures, Mrs. Crowley. I'll give Jennifer a set when they're developed. Stephen, Jennifer said. Oh, sorry, Stephen. Mrs. Crowley chuckled. You two must have had a ball last night from the way that... Stephen talked after he got home. It was a lot of fun, I said. The kids weren't nearly as bad as I expected. I hope that today goes half as well. There are still a lot of jerks around, Michelle, Mrs. Crowley said, but things have been improving. Cross-dressing has gained a lot more acceptance in recent years. We're seeing a lot of drag scenes in movies and television shows, and my client list of CDs continues to grow each year. Some of them travel as much as two hours for a fitting. As she talked, I thought about my discussion with mom in September when she had asked if I just wanted to be a man that dresses like a woman sometimes. I had said no at the time. Michelle, if you have any problems and need a ride home, you call me immediately. I'll be home all day. Thank you, Mrs. Crowley. I admit I'm really nervous, even more than last night. We'll take care of her, mom, Jennifer said. One of us is going to walk with Michelle to all her classes. She'll never be alone until she's home again this afternoon. Jennifer's words made me feel a little better, at least until we got to the school and walked inside. Those kids that hadn't seen us walk in did double takes when they turned to see what everyone was staring at, and guys just stood open-mouthed as we passed them on our way to our homerooms. Stephen and I had put our masks on just before we entered the school, but I could tell that everyone already knew about last night. My mask would announce that this was just a Halloween costume. As I slid into my regular seat in my homeroom class, the teacher, Mr. Valentine, stared at me, then looked me up and down from the toes of my boots to the top of my head. The skirt was too tight to allow me to cross my legs comfortably, so I settled for holding my legs tightly together. It wasn't difficult in the tight skirt. Ashley, he asked, tentatively. Yes, Mr. Valentine? I answered questioningly. Uh, nothing. Oh, remove the mask while you're in a classroom. And, uh, you look very nice today. Thank you, Mr. Valentine, I said after removing the mask. 
I heard in the teacher's lounge that you won the prize for best costume at the dance last night, but wasn't that for wearing a wedding gown? Yes, but I couldn't wear the gown to school, so I settled for this outfit instead. It's supposed to be a honeymoon outfit. Winning the contest was quite a surprise. My husband also won. Your husband. Jennifer Crowley played that part. Oh, yes, Jennifer. We went as newlyweds. She's my husband and I'm her wife. I see. Very clever. If you looked even half as good last night as you do today, I can see understand how you won. Thank you, Mr. Valentine, I said sweetly. The way I spoke earned me another strange look from him before he began to take attendance, but his eyes kept darting back to me every minute or so. I had taken out a book to await the start of first period, but I was keenly aware of his glances. When the first bell rang, I stood to leave, but was immediately surrounded by the girls in my homeroom, who smiled and made small comments about how great I looked. The guys just looked at me strangely as they passed me on their way out. If the rest of the day was like this, I may have been silly to worry. Barbara Huffing showed up a few minutes later, and we walked to trigonometry class together. I had been sharing my homework with Barbara for years, and this year we were in the same class. She was smart enough to do the work on her own, but it would have interfered with her social schedule. Michelle, you look absolutely incredible, she said as we started walking. Who did your hair? I did it myself, I said. Then added quickly, my mom showed me how before the dance. It turned out good. Good? It's great. And that skirt and jacket with the matching boots are to die for. You got that from Jennifer, I mean Stephen. Her sister is almost the same size as me. I can't believe how tiny your waist is. I could never fit into that skirt. It looks like it was made for you, like the wedding gown. And I still can't get over how great you look. I would never in a million years believe that it was you if I didn't know you since we were in grade school. No wonder Kyle kissed you last night. Stephen and I put a lot of effort into making ourselves look as genuine as possible. Nobody guessed his real identity either, until he unmasked. We figured that our heights would work to our advantage, since guys are usually taller than their female partners. That's true, but I don't know anyone else that could have pulled off your role. And most wouldn't dream of putting on a gown, unless they could make it look like a joke. They'd never want to have anyone even think that they enjoyed looking pretty. We were passing a lot of kids in costumes, but I didn't see any guys wearing skirts or dresses. I began searching the sea of faces for Billy Thomas, expecting to see him in his cheerleading outfit, but when I finally spotted him, I saw that he was wearing his football uniform instead. I suppose that he'd either had enough of the ribbing from his friends, or that Cecilia had lied last night. Whatever, it was too late to do anything about it now. We'd reached our classroom, so we entered and took our seats. The girls crowded around me until the bell rang to start the period. Mr. Carruthers stared at me when he took attendance, but then continued on. And he wasn't the only one who stared. I wasn't used to receiving all the attention that was directed my way. The strange part was having all the guys staring at my chest and legs, including Mr. Carruthers. I sat in the front row in that class, and it seemed that Mr. Carruthers spent a lot more time than usual reading from the textbook and staring at my legs during pauses. The rest of the morning was pretty much the same. Someone met me after every class, and we walked together and talked. Most of the girls whom I encountered for the first time, even those with whom I wasn't really close friends, commented on my clothes, and some spoke of the gown I had worn to the dance. I had ceased to be a non-entity for the day, and I began to enjoy all the attention from the girls. As I grew more comfortable, I relaxed and chatted more openly. The cashier in the school cafeteria refused to accept my ID at lunch, telling me that students were only permitted to use their own ID for meals, although I explained that I was in costume. She just wouldn't believe that I was Jimmy. The food service manager, who had heard about the Halloween party, finally resolved the situation, while my friends watched and giggled at my predicament. Originally, all the talk at the table was of the dance, but it eventually turned to everyday matters, and I began to feel that I was being treated as one of the girls for the first time, instead of as the lone male permitted to sit at the table. Towards the end of the hour, we left the cafeteria and walked as a group to the restroom. No one questioned me as I entered the girls' room with the others, and I used a stall to pee before joining the girls at the mirrors. 
Conversations continued unabated as I repaired my makeup and brushed my hair. Jennifer had removed her top hat before we left the cafeteria, and she brushed her hair out before using a hair clip to hold it above her head again, fitting her hat to cover it. I helped her make sure that every strand was tucked up under the hat. She wasn't wearing any makeup. My only problem of the day occurred just before the last class. No one showed to walk with me to my class, so I joined the kids in the corridor and walked alone. I was still getting a lot of stares, and I began to wonder if they were from curiosity, suspicion, or lust. I had almost made it to my classroom when I was suddenly seized from behind and thrown against the hall lockers. The backpack I was carrying went flying into several kids walking in front of me. Kyle grabbed my throat in his left hand, pushing the back of my head into the lockers, and glared at me. You think you're funny, don't you, freak? You've made me a laughing stock by getting me to kiss you last night at the dance. I didn't ask you to kiss me. I managed to squeak out. I even tried to stop you. Yeah, well, kiss this, he said as he balled his fist and drew back his arm. I closed my eyes, anticipating the punch, but was suddenly pulled sideways by somebody's vice-like grip on my arm while the grip on my throat was released. I opened my eyes in time to see Kyle falling to the floor. The hand gripping my arm belonged to Billy Thomas. You touch her again and I'll kiss your face with my foot instead of my fist, Billy Thomas said as he stood over Kyle, who was now flat on his back. Kyle looked up with a frightened expression on his face, rolled onto his stomach, and then crawled a few feet before getting to his feet. As he disappeared into the crowd, Billy Thomas looked at me. You okay, Michelle? I smiled and nodded. Thanks, Billy. He smiled back at me. My pleasure. That jerk shouldn't bother you again. By the way, I thought your costume last night was fantastic. I was going to wear mine today, but after seeing yours, I felt pretty inadequate. You really look hot today, he said, winking. I smiled. Thanks. Can I walk you to your next class? Uh, sure. I'm in room 204. Great. I'm headed to 207. As the small crowd that had gathered to watch the fight dissipated, one of the kids held out my backpack. Billy took it, saying, I'll carry that for you. Oh, okay, I said unsure of whether I should insist on carrying it myself or not. I turned and started walking slowly towards 204. Billy fell in alongside me. If you dress like that normally, no guy in school would ever be able to concentrate on his schoolwork, he said. Well, it is a little tight. I didn't realize how tight until I got dressed this morning. You know, for a long time some guys have believed that you were really a girl, pretending to be a guy. Really? I said, surprised at the revelation. Yeah, well, I can see how it would seem that way. You only hang with girls, and they always treat you as if you're one of them. Your voice hasn't gotten any deeper for as long as I've known you, and you usually wear baggy jeans and oversized sweaters. A lot of guys have thought you were hiding something. Also, I never noticed it before last night, but you stand and move like a girl. It's the high heels. They force you to walk differently. No, it not just the way you walk, although that's part of it. I meant that the way you hold your arms and move your body when talking is the way that women move. Since last night, a lot more guys have begun expressing the opinion that you're really a chick. For a long time before I had gone to Illinois, I had made a conscious effort to not adopt the mannerisms of the girls that I associated with. Then, while living as a woman, I had accepted them as a necessary part of my disguise. I thought that I had managed to suppress them again since coming home, but apparently I hadn't been totally successful, perhaps because I was constantly switching back and forth and the line between my identities was blurring. I had known that things would change after I wore that gown to the Halloween dance and then revealed my identity, but his statement suggesting that some guys had thought I was a genetic female before last night was news to me. It kept reverberating in my head. What do you think? I asked. After seeing you in that gown last night, and now in that outfit today, well, it would be obvious to anyone but a blind person that you're just not felt like a guy. I'm not talking about height, but about shape. Overall, guys are bigger on top and smaller on bottom, while girls are built the opposite, not to mention being lots softer and having curves. I'm sure you know that I'm into contact sports, and that includes the wrestling team. 
When I gripped your upper arm a couple of minutes ago to pull you away from Kyle, it sure didn't feel like a guy's arm. It felt like Stephanie's arm. And everyone is saying that if you were a guy, there would have to be some indication in that tight skirt. Not being particularly well endowed, I hadn't had any trouble hiding my maleness with the dancer's belt, but I wasn't about to begin discussing that with Billy or anyone else. So everyone has pretty much deduced that I'm secretly a girl. Is that it? Not everyone, he said, chuckling. Kyle obviously doesn't think so. He did last night, when he forced himself on me and tried to lick my navel from the inside. Michelle, everybody thought that you were a girl last night, until you revealed your identity. Would you have identified yourself at the end of the night if you hadn't won the prize? I hadn't intended to. That's what I figured. What would you have worn to school today? Just my normal clothes, I guess. Baggy jeans, t-shirt, and a bulky sweater. We had reached my classroom door. Billy looked at me and said, Will you tell me? Tell you what? Are you boy or a girl? I couldn't suppress a giggle as I took my bookcase from his arm. I put my hand on his and squeezed gently for a second. Yes, I suppose I am. Then I smiled and added, Thanks for saving me from Kyle. You were like my knight in shining armor. The ambiguity of my answer must have really perplexed Billy, because he just stood there watching my back as I entered the classroom. I didn't turn around, but I could see his reflection in the classroom windows as I walked to my usual desk. After sitting down, I glanced back to the doorway, but he was gone. Please subscribe for the next part and visit my Patreon page for early access.